I don't always wear my glasses, but when I do, I look like this. <laughs> So you had your first client, your first paid work, or maybe by now you had a few already and you feel like you're getting some traction. Let's talk about it. Today I want to share five advice, five best practices you should consider when doing photo and video work for your clients. But before we get into that, I really want to stress and I want to put it out there how much I believe in doing free work. As a matter of fact, I actually believe in chasing companies to offer your free work. But strategically maybe you realized you haven't worked with food yet your portfolio is okay but this area you haven't touched so what do you do maybe you contact your local restaurant and offer a 15 second commercial for their social media or take some photos for their menu okay but why should i really work for free alex good question i'm not saying you should always work for free but you might consider doing it at some stages in your career. So why do I think free work is sometimes good for you? Well, first of all, there's less pressure on your shoulders. I mean, you're the one that came to them to offer your free services, so they might not have too many requirements and conditions. Actually, you have so much flexibility with the final product that maybe you want to take your portfolio to a different angle, so you really want to start experimenting with things. So basically, you do have a say in what the final product should be. Of course, in the limit of the brand identity of the client you're working with, but what I'm trying to say is, again, there's room for experimenting. I have three more reasons of why I think free work is good for you. First of all, you're going to improve your skills dramatically. You're going to have such a huge learning curve because, again, you're going to probably experiment with things. Learn from mistakes instead of watching tutorials all day. Another thing that's going to increase dramatically is your portfolio. You're going to have so many projects to show for. And last but not least, if the outcome of the project is good and you've earned the trust of the client, they might call you up for paid work later on. Okay. And with that out of the way, let's get into my five best practices I think you should keep in mind when working with clients. Number one, know your skills. Be self-aware, be conscious of what exactly you're very good at right now and what you need improvement on. A lot of times a client will ask, can you do this? Can you do that? Can you do 3D animation? Do you have a drone? Can we jump off the balcony and pretend we're in the matrix? No, don't, don't jump off the balcony. But what I mean is, if the client asks, let's say, can you do 2D animations? And right now the answer may be no. Don't just say no at the meeting and maybe lose the project. Just say, give me a day, I'll go home and I'll send you a draft to see if we're on the same page. A lot of times the client doesn't ask for a lot. It's just maybe you get scared of a little text animation that you can learn in half an hour or an hour here on YouTube. Actually, the way I started to dive deeper into animating things in Adobe After Effects is because clients kept asking me if I can do animations. And a lot of times in the beginning, the answer was no, but I never actually said no. There's a thin line between fake it till you make it. I don't really like that attitude, but you can be transparent with the client and maybe say something in the lines of, I'll go home, try something out and see if we're on the same page. So basically you go home, you watch some tutorials and send them a draft. See if they're happy with it. Advice number two, know your gear. This one is also self-explanatory, but it's really important to know your gear. If the client asks for slow motion shots and your camera can only do 30 frames per second, it's really important to know that you can't do slow motion. So here, this is exactly what I mean. Know how strong are your lights. What can your camera actually do? Play around in the menu. Find out what is the best way to use the microphone you have. For example, the client can ask you, can you follow me from point A to point B because that's how I want to start the video. And you're like, yeah, but I got to buy a stabilizer. So by now, if you know your skills and know your gear, you have a very good foundation to start. And they can both be upgraded and improved, but you're good to go. Number three, understand the project. Make sure you ask a lot of questions before you start. Let's say you're doing a video. Ask the client, who is this video for? Who should watch this video? Understand their targeted customers. Another important aspect, where will this video be distributed? Only on your website? Are you gonna send them in an email? Is this just for social media? You really have to understand these things before you even start filming. Also, if you're involved in the scripting process, you have to ask yourself and the client, 
Is there a call to action at the end of the video? What should the viewer do or think or feel after watching the video you made? And the last one on this point is do some research. Find out what kind of work already exists that may be similar to what you're trying to do. You don't want to accidentally become a copycat because it can happen unconsciously. Maybe a year ago you've watched a movie or a friend told you an idea or you've watched a YouTube video. You might end up doing the exact same thing. So just do some research, make sure you differentiate a little bit from what's out there. Number four, and this is a fun one, make sure the client understands the project. And yeah, this one goes hand in hand with the previous advice. As long as you understand the project, make sure the client understands what you're doing. Basically, unless you're gonna work with a media agency, not all clients know that a video for Instagram reel has to be vertical. Therefore, you have to think in advance how to film that. So when you ask your questions, make sure they understand what kind of distribution channels they're gonna use when your video is ready. Also, make sure they know what kind of time and effort every adjustment and revision implies because a lot of times a client will say, oh, can you also just save that for Instagram? And you're like, no. A lot of times a client will think it's just click, click, click and it's done. Sometimes you're asked if you have a drone because the client wants an aerial shot and they don't really know what that implies. They don't know you paid a lot of money for your drone plus a license for your commercial use for your freelance work. And you need to argue to your client why you need to charge more now per hour when you're doing aerial shots because not anybody can do that. And the last point on my list today is terms and conditions. It's your job to make sure you're on the same page with the client because a lot of times they're gonna ask you, hey, um, can I have the raw photos as well when you're done? No, just no, don't, no, no, no one wants to hear can I have the raw photos? Because no photographer does that. Unless of course that was the deal from the beginning and they pay you for that. You don't trust me? Ask any photographer you know, they'll confirm. Another aspect to really be on the same page with the client is payment. How are you getting paid? Do you want half of the money in advance, the other half when you're done, or the whole amount when you're done with the project? Also make sure the client understands your hourly rate or however you charge because you may agree on one price, but by the end of the project, you already had five revisions. So they need to understand the price might go up the more they want adjustments. And a bonus tip for my list today is have fun with it. After all, you're the creative one. A lot of us suffer from this imposter syndrome where you think you're not good enough. Maybe you're not good enough to do a Netflix documentary, but trust your skills, trust your gear, and make sure you understand the project at hand. Don't be afraid to try new things and experiment with ideas because more often than not, you'll get a positive response from the people you work with. A lot of times the client wants to do things differently and at the end of the day, that's why you're there. So I really hope you got some insight and some valuable information from my advice today. And if that's true, please subscribe to my channel and like this video. And I hope I'll see you next time. Bye. Ciao. Ciao ragazzi. Algorithm. The algorithm.